It's time to learn about animation, or more specifically, keyframe animation, because character animation with its rigs and bones and things is its own entire separate beast we're not gonna get into. We're just gonna do a very simple camera move. Specifically, we want the camera to start above the donuts and then fall down to reveal the final plate uh, at the end, right? It's an excuse to learn about keyframing. Well, the basics of animation is really simple. If you go to the bottom of your screen, if you're in layout, uh, layout at the layout, layout <laughs> at the top, uh, we can drag up on this divider here and you can see we've got a timeline, which if I click and drag across is currently doing nothing because there is no animation. So if we pull out, right? I'm just gonna do a really simple animation to show you. you don't have to follow this because this is a different animation than what we're gonna do. It, it, animation's really simple. You select the object that you want to apply a keyframe to, and then you hit I. I for insert keyframe, and you get this like scary looking menu. Apparently they're gonna change this eventually. But for now, you would place a keyframe on what it is you're planning to animate. So in this case, it's the location, right? So I wanna move the camera, location. Then I change my frame count to be the frame I want it to end at. Then I move the object how I want it to move, right there, and then I add another keyframe, I, and then say location. And now, as I play it back, which I can do by hitting spacebar, you can see that the camera is moving. Ha ha, look at us right? A very simple camera move. Now, I don't actually want that though, so I'm going to delete those keyframes. Um, and what we want is, we want what I showed you at the start, we want our camera to start uh, up here, right? Rotated, pointing down this way. And then we want it to move in an arc uh, in this direction, terrible arrow, um, pointed down this way, right? Now you could do this, you could move the camera up there, you could then re-rotate it to point it down and then do a keyframe for the location, the rotation, and then do a, another one over here, but it would be very difficult to control that movement. And really this is a rather simple movement if we have a pivot object. If we have something here and then we parent that camera to that object and then we just rotate that object, it's a lot easier. So what we need to add is, uh, first of all, I want to think, what do I want to be the center of it? What do I want to be, where do I want that pivot object? So I think, you know, somewhere roughly in the middle of these donuts. So right here, I'm gonna hold down shift and then right click, and that's gonna put my 3D cursor um, right where I've put it. And now to add an object, shift A, and I'm looking for empty. So an empty, I mean, if you're familiar with other uh, creative tools you probably already know, but it's just something, it's uh, similar to a null object in After Effects, etc. It's just something that's gonna be in the 3D viewport that won't be rendered, okay? A number of options here, it doesn't matter which one you choose. You can go plain axes, uh, and then if you went to the options here, the data, you could change the display here to uh, what we saw um, before. But this is just like a different display um, object, right? Depending on what you're looking for. I think the sphere is actually the most useful. It's way too big currently, so I'm gonna change the size to be something about that. And there we go. Okay, so now what we need to do is we want to parent our camera to this new empty object. So select the camera first, then shift select that new empty that we've just created. And then I'm gonna hit control P and then set parent object keep transform, just like what we did um, with the icing and the donut. So now you should see if you select that empty and as I rotate it around, the camera will rotate with it. And if you look through the camera with numpad zero and then just double tap R, you can see that I can trackball rotate around it. Um, and you can see this is like way more flexible for what we want. We want the camera to be focused on one point and then we just wanna move the camera around that point. Um, and you can do some really nice, fast camera moves here if you wanted to do something snazzy. In our case, we're gonna do a nice, simple, slow movement. So first of all, this angle, this look that we've got right here is where we want the final reveal to be. So this is where I want the end point, the end keyframe of my animation to be. So you can make your animation as long as you want. I think about 160 frames is about right for this sort of, uh, the, the speed of this animation. So on frame 160 there, you can see it's also mentioned there. I'm going to, with my empty selected, not my camera, I'm going to hit I and then not select location like I did before, but rotation, because we're gonna be just rotating that pivot point, not changing its um, its position. So rotation, then I'm going to go to the first frame, which I could do by clicking and dragging, or shift left arrow will jump you to the first uh, frame, or you can click these little um, 
I don't know what you call that button, jump to end point, um, you can do that as well. And now that I'm here, I'm gonna rotate this along not the tilt axis, which it is by default, but the X axis. Aha, right, so now you can see we are doing that exact move we want. And then the top left-hand corner, you can see the exact number of degrees. Um, and I'm gonna go with exactly minus 90. So if you hold down control, you can see it's snapping to uh, minus 90. And then I'm gonna click. Okay, now before I change my frame, if I was to change the frame, um, you can see it's just snapped me back to where I were. So always remember, you have to create a keyframe if you've changed its movement without saving it or without putting in a new keyframe. So back up to here, minus 90, and I'm gonna hit I and then say rotation. Okay, and now we should see if we hit spacebar to play, a very, very simple animation. Okay, now, we can tweak this though, we can improve this because you can see that for one, it's a little awkward that the camera starts in a completely stationary stop position, then it ramps up and then it slows down towards the end. It's a little bit of a weird camera move. What I want instead is I want it to start, I already want it to be moving, right? Like almost like it's from another shot that's kind of faded into this one. I want it to start moving and then to much more slowly fade it out than it is currently. Cause you can see it just kind of like drops down here and then the camera just stops and it's a little too sudden. And while you could change the keyframes here, like you can do some very simple uh, handle type changes, this view, this layout view is not the best place to do this. So instead, if you go to the animation tab at the top there, you can see it's, again, it's rearranged all your screens. Um, this over here is just another 3D view. Over here is the camera, uh, the camera view. But at the bottom here, you can see we've changed from the timeline which is what we had before, and it's changed to a dope sheet. So a dope sheet is just gonna show you more information um, about the keyframes. So for example, you can see that the X rotation has a dot over here and a dot over here, but the Y and the Z um, has a different look. It's got a continuous line across it. And that's to show you that this actually hasn't changed. The, the Y and the Z has no information that's uh, changed from the start to the end. So we don't actually need these keyframes. So I only need the X rotation. So I'm going to select the Y and the Z and I'm just gonna delete them just by hitting the delete key. So we've now just got one channel that the animation is happening on. Right, but we can't really change it. We can't make it so that this starts faster and then this slows down from this view. Instead, we need to change to a different view. So in the top left-hand corner, click this and we're gonna change the window type to be graph editor. Okay, so the graph editor looks like this. So I'm gonna use middle mouse to uh, pan around here. And you can see we've now got a line, right, with some handles on it, which is a lot easier to understand, but it's hard to get it all in the view. So you could hit the home key and that will automatically reorient everything um, to position it in the view. Or if you hold down control and middle mouse button, this enables you to just moving around, just dragging around, control middle mouse button will change the, uh, the axis zoom as well as the Y, right, up and down like that. Um, which is just a really handy way to quickly orient yourself around. So control middle mouse to change this and then you can uh, middle mouse to pan to a different area. Okay, so again, making sure I'm looking at the X rotation there, right? And if we look, you should see the problem that we have, right? We have the start of the animation. It's a very slow curve that's going up. It picks up speed in the middle uh, and then it ends here. And the end is a little abrupt considering uh, the amount of movement that it has. So really we want um, this line instead to look a little bit closer to this line, right? Or even, I mean, that was kind of a bad line. Pull it rather like that, okay? That's the kind of look that we want. So with our starting keyframe here, uh, I'm gonna use the same hockey that you use everywhere, uh, and that's R, um, to just get that angle to look a lot closer to what I want. Don't go too far up. If you go like vertical, you'll see that the start is like so abrupt, it's almost like it's like skipping down or something. So I don't want it to be that far. I'm gonna rotate a little bit out like that. So there's a little bit of a harsh movement, but not too harsh, if you know what I mean. There we go, something like that. And then for this end bit, you can see it ends rather suddenly. Maybe you disagree, but I found when I looked at the animation, it was rather sudden. So this final endpoint here, I'm going to scale it out by hitting S. So again, same hotkeys work all across Blender, which is very nice. Awesome. So now if I play it back, you should see it moves rather fast at the beginning 
and then slowly tapers out towards the end to a nice soft landing, which is really cool. And that's pretty well, yeah, that's a pretty good animation. Now we could stop here, but the other thing we could do to get a little bit more motion in it is we could have the camera start closer to the donuts and then pull out as it goes further away. I hate that this keeps uh, interrupting. I'm gonna hide that. Okay, there we go, select my pivot, there we go. So uh, essentially we could have it so that it starts, like the camera starts right about here and then it pulls out and then as it pulls out, it goes a little bit further away and like ends back here. So have a think about how you would do that. How would you have the camera start closer to the pivot point, right? Now you might think, well, okay, we could animate the camera pulling in closer, but that would be overly complicated. We can just use the same pivot point, but we can scale it. Cause you can see if I hit S, Look at that, the camera goes closer, and if I pull it out, you can see the camera moves further away. So what I wanna do is I wanna to go to the uh, the final endpoint here, the frame 160, which by the way, you can jump to an existing keyframe just by using the up and down arrows. So if I go up, you can see it's uh, that keyframe, or down, it uh, takes me to the front. So I wanna go here, and I wanna create uh, a keyframe just for the scale information. So here, because this is the end view that I want, so I'm gonna hit I and then say, not rotation, but scale. So now I'm gonna go to the front of the animation and I'm gonna scale it in to get a nice close up of the donuts right there. And then I'm gonna add another keyframe, I and then scale. So you should now see in your graph editor, that's what it's called, um, you should see your rotation information and then your scale information. Now you'll know that the scale is like, like where is the scale information? It's here, but it's so small, like the amount of uh, variance here, it's so small that it it's just not readable. And the reason for that is that it's trying to combine two different data types into one view, right? Because rotation is happening on a, you can see here, it's a, oh, I just wrote over the top of it. It's zero degrees and then down here you've got minus 90. So this is a minus 90, right? But then up here we've got scale that's happening between a zero range and a one range which is right next to it, okay? So one, you could just hide your rotation or you can click on normalize. And normalize will uh, put everything between a zero to one range. But just know that when you're in this range, if you try to move a keyframe to be a different value, like you took your scale and then you moved it down, when you confirm it, it'll snap back to where it was. And that's because with normalize on, it'll always put everything between zero to one. So don't do it if you're planning to change a value of something, normalize, um, but otherwise it's, uh, it's okay to use for changing the handles, like in this case. But I'm going to hide my rotation anyway, because it's just gonna get in the way. Um, and instead you can see that X, Y, and Z all have information in them, because of course we're not scaling it on any particular axes, it's across all three axes at once because it's like a, yeah, it's the uniform value of scale. So um, again, I could do the same thing here. I could rotate this. I don't want there to be too much of a difference. Like it's actually pretty good by default. Like the scale isn't as noticeable that it slowly ramps up. Um, and it's good to have like a kind of a softer movement as it pulls away. But I do want to change it a little bit. I'm going to select these final endpoints. I'll scale that out a little bit as well just so that it's a little softer as it scales out. And that is pretty good, folks. Now you'll note as I play through this that in the top left-hand corner of the screen, you've got FPS, which stands for frames per second. If you play video games, you're already well familiar with that term. Uh, and you can see as we play through it, it can't really make up its mind. It's like 24, no, 25, 26, 20, 24. It's, I think it's just a readout glitch in, in Blender. It's actually a constant 24 frames per second by default. But for whatever reason, it's kind of like fluctuating between them. Anyway, point is, is you can change that amount by going to your output settings over here. And then underneath format, you've got frame rate. Now, for whatever reason, Blender chose 24 frames per second, which is really only used for feature film. Everyone else for like TV or YouTube, it's 30 frames per second. You can also uh, go 60 frames per second if you wanted to really pay for longer render times because it means things uh, have to be, you have to render like twice as many frames, but it means things are buttery smooth. You won't actually see it right now because I'm recording this tutorial at 30 frames per second. 
Anyways, really, the, the options that most people choose are 24 for cinema and feature films, 30 if you're a normal person and you're making things for internet or YouTube or anything, and then 60 if it's for like 3D content or something that has to be really, really smooth. Anyways, we're going to set it to 30 because that is the more standard frame rate for, uh, for most things. I know people like to argue, but yes, 30 is, uh, in my opinion, a much more reasonable uh, frame rate for most things. And the final thing you'll note um, as we play through this is that it gets to frame 160 and then it just kind of pauses for a bit until it gets to frame 250 and then it loops back. And that is because uh, the end frame is set to 250. So if we set this to 160 instead, which is what our animation ends at, you can see it will now play through and it'll get to the end and then it will loop back to the start. And also if you want to like reset this, this, uh, this view in your timeline, you can hit the home key and that'll like expand it out a little bit um, and there you go. So that is basically our final animation. You can tweak it, you can make it look a little bit more polished than what I have here, because when I'm recording a tutorial, I can only do so much before people get bored. Um, but that's, that's pretty good, it's not bad. So we are nearing the end. Go ahead, click here to join me in what might be the final part, uh, where we're gonna do rendering and forming that, uh, that final animation. So click there and I will see you there.